Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to my channel, why don't you consider subscribing and clicking on the bell for notifications and giving this video or any of my videos the thumbs up. With that, let's get on with it. So, I've done quite a few KVM switches and docking stations in the past. In fact, recently as well. And I was sent this one. This is called the Comet. And it's a remote KVM switch. And it comes with a little controller as well. Power control board that you can put in your PC if you want you to. You don't have to add this. This is an extra. You can just buy this on its own or you can buy this with this. Okay. Right, let's have a quick look around the box. Nothing to really tell you. EU, REP, model number. And that's it. So it's GL.INET. And the model is Comet, or is it the GL minus RM1? I'm not sure. Or it could be both. But either way, we're testing it. What's this say on the side? 2K at 60 frames per second resolution, okay? Remote services, gigabyte ethernet, audio output support, okay? So we have connect with GL iNet. Let's get started, very handy. Especially if you don't know what you're doing, because I don't, not yet anyway. Not on this baby. Oh, it's quite heavy, it's got a nice bit of weight to it. Don't break it, Yorkie, don't break it. Let's have a quick look around. So we have USB type C connection. Now that gives power, because it says five volt, two amps. So you can put power through there. So that would be for your power. Ethernet, which we just discussed. USB Type-C connection for keyboard and mouse. HDMI connection. USB 2.0. Uh, a connection button of some sort. Another Q code on the bottom. Some little feet for stopping it sliding about. There's a nice bit of weight though. Yeah, I quite like that. Let's get a fit out and I'll tell you exactly what we've got. USB-A to USB Type-C connection, Ethernet cable, I probably won't use that, although looking at it, it's quite a good one, it's a flat one. Uh, USB Type-C to USB Type-C, might use that, and we have HDMI connection. I probably won't use that, but then again I might, <laughs> we will have to see. So that is everything you get in the box if you just buy the actual unit itself, okay? Now, if you buy the one with the actual control board, you'll get another box. Let me quickly go through and show you. Which I might not use, actually. I'm not sure yet. So we have a cable so you can connect the controller up to your motherboard. So that will go into your controller. And then that will go onto your motherboard for power, for LED displays and things like that when you're first building a PC. Yes. Yeah, sure. The actual controller itself, so like I said, this would go in Probably something like that, I guess. So that would go in there, and then that goes in your mud ball, like I said. You have a couple of buttons there. One, two. USB Type C connection for powering this up, and that is it. Yeah, very good. And again, we have another USB. USB A to USB Type C connection, and that would be for powering that up. But like I said, we might not be using that and two melting brackets for melting it inside a PC case yeah or on the PCI slot somewhere I'm not sure how that would go on a PCI slot but there's a hole there ah I see so you mount it like that right on there so it goes something like that Probably like that. Yeah, like that. Job done. See that? So, 
I can say, does it come with screws? Yes, it does. So two screws will be for screwing the board into the plate and then the plate onto the actual case or holding it onto the actual case. Yeah, easy peasy lemon squeezy when you've got all the answers. Let's see how easy it is to set up, shall we? It should be quite easy. It should be basically plug and play if you're just going to plug this in, but we will see. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll plug it into my grandson's computer that I built for him. And very easy to do. Like I said, it is basically plug and play. So you need USB for power, which is the one next to the Ethernet. Ethernet, so you've got internet connection, so you can connect to it from anywhere in the world. You need one USB cable plugged into a USB, which I plugged in at the front just to show you. And you need one HDMI connection so you can actually see the computer from another device. Software, you need to download a little bit of software and install it and set it up and get a user account. Now there is a link on the instructions for you to download and you can either download for Windows or Mac. So that's something to bear in mind. But there are other ways to connect to the other device and I will go through that in a second. So like I said, download the software, install it, set it all up, get connected. Now for me, once the device was actually installed and ready to go and I registered my account, it wouldn't find it on automatic. I had to go in to do it on manual. So the way you do it is you give it a name and I called it Studio because that's where it's going to go. And then you put in the SN number, which is on the back of the device. It's a unique number for that. Make sure you put it in correctly. So with that, what it does, it links it together. So it links the hardware to your account. Easy when you know how. So once you linked it up, just click on the actual icon and you can go straight in through the actual app that you've downloaded for either Windows or Mac. Or you can put in your IP address and I'm going to show you that in a second. To make sure you don't forget your password, you need to enter it twice to confirm and you're good to go. Let me quickly show you it on my phone and then I will show you on my computer. So yeah. You can do it on your phone. So this is a local connection, not an internet connection, but it should work basically the same. Just, you just need to put in a different IP. So, password. I need to enter my password. Oh, and if you want to know, it's password 24-7, because I don't use that, only for, like, doing tests. And we're in. Look, hey. <laughs> You can't see anything because it's really small, so we need to enlarge it. What you can do is your old finger bit, yeah? So there's your mouse up there. Moving about because we connected the mouse. Uh, see what else we can do. So we have internet connection on now, so we can go on the internet. I don't know, let's type in something like YouTube or something. Actually, I can't see it. It's just too small. It's really small. Let's make it bigger, and we'll go down to the bottom logos. Look, down the bottom. So, there's my internet. Yeah, there's my actual page. Yeah, so that is the computer that's in another room. Two rooms away. That's it. Works really well. Like I said, it is quite small. Now, from here... You can do exactly the same as if you was actually in the room on the computer itself. So you can shut it down, start up, thing like that. Now, I'm not sure how you do the startup because I do believe you have to make sure you turn on WAN you know, or the LAN connection for you know, turning computer on and off, things like that. But you can turn it off on here, which is quite easy. Just go along here. Just go where you normally go. To shut the computer down, which we're not going to do. But yeah, you have total control. Right, I'm going to come out of there because it's a lot easier to show you actually on the computer. I'm going to switch over to my computer. Give me a second. So we're on the computer and just going to log in right now. Give it a few seconds. Click on the link for remote control. Let it start up. It may take a few seconds, depending on your internet connection. It shouldn't take too long. Put in a password. 
and we're in. Right, so you can see everything the same as if you was actually on the computer itself. So my grandson likes to play computer games. He likes playing Battlefield 1942 and all the add-ons, which is up here. And yeah, so you can click on them, play them. You can shut the computer down if you wanted to, if I go in there and then shut down or do a restart. Whatever you need to do, you can transfer information over, you can copy and paste. So you've got all the settings up here. Reset KVM if you needed to for whatever reason. Mouse mode, scroll, toolbox. Now, you can actually write in the clipboard here and then copy and paste it over to here if you wanted to. So it says there, paste to remote device. See, there you go. And then we have some shortcuts. Wake up LAN. Now I haven't set up the LAN properly yet. Ideally, you need the control board for setting up the LAN properly. Accessories, no external devices, virtual media, app center, even a help section. You've got everything as if you was actually there. So if you need to shut the computer down, you could. If you need to make any adjustments, you can. Click on your emails. You know, you can even go to YouTube. Just search for YouTube. Wikipedia. Don't really want that. Let's click on this one. Pause it. Right, now let's do a browser. Because I did say I would show you it in a browser, didn't I? So I'm going to shut that down. Shut that down. Close that. I quit. Open up the browser. Over. And I believe it's 192. And it's 89. Yes, we're in. Put in your password. Log in. And give it a few seconds. And we're in. And that's for a web browser. Now, look, you can move things about if you wanted to. I'll put them back. It's up to you. It's exactly the same if you're using the actual software itself, but you're doing it for a browser. And look, you've still got all the settings. You've got your tools, accessories, virtual media, app center, and your help. And again, you can just shut down the actual computer itself. So what do you think? The only downside that I can see with something like this is it needs a HDMI connection so you can actually see what you're doing. So if you have a graphics card that only has one HDMI out and you're using it, that could be an issue for you. That is the only downside that I could see. Apart from that, brilliant. It gets a little bit warm. It doesn't get hot, but it gets a little bit warm. And, well, it just works like a show chart. And you can use it on, you know, your phone, a tablet, a laptop, another PC, like I showed you. Yeah, you could use it on multiple different devices, and you could probably do it anywhere in the world, providing you've got internet, of course. Now, if you want total control, you might want to purchase this. So this is basically the controller, which I mentioned earlier, where you fill it inside the actual PC that you're going to want to control and you do all the little wiring exactly the same as if you're going to turn on your actual PC wiring you know it's for when you press start up or restart on the actual case you need to wire this into them connections rather than the case one so it's probably the only thing I could think you really need this for is if you want to do something like that apart from that yeah love it so this is the GL plus iNet and it works extremely well. Link in the video description. Gets my thumbs up, and the reason it gets my thumbs up is because it was easy to use, and it just works. You do need a bit of software, but once you set it all up, it's easy to find, as long as you remember the IP address. We done a local IP address, not an external IP address, but I want you to see how easy it was to work, and how easy it is to control. The other thing is, you can have a bit of fun with this, like I did yesterday with my grandson. I was sitting in the room with him while he was trying to start his PC up, and he said, 
there was something going wrong with my mouse because I was controlling it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he thought it was funny as well. So with that, if you found this video informative or helpful in any particular way, or just entertaining, let me know by subscribing, clicking on the bell for notifications, and give this video the thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching.